but college basketball is already done, right? College basketball is, is is already done in itself. Like like I mean, if you look at the top five players in the, in, in, in college basketball, it's really kind of hard to name. They're gonna be gone after this year. So we talking about a senior going four years to big dance. That's great and everything, but we're look we're talking about Bronny James, who's a backup at USC. That's the biggest story this year. The biggest story this year in college basketball, right now, men's college basketball, is is Bronny James playing at USC. That's the biggest story. So college basketball already reached this point where it's diluted in the fact that people are one and done, and Kyle Parry figured it out. Hey, look, one and done. I'll get you to the league. Keep on coming to Kentucky, <laughs> right? And and that's that's the dynamic of it. Women's basketball, on the other hand, which I segue to, women's basketball was flourishing, right? Mainly because w- w- women's basketball, its players essentially will make more money if they stay four years in 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 college than if they if, than if they would if they left early. Now some players do leave early, uh, you know, for whatever reason, uh, maybe because the NIL money is not there. But if you're a top college basketball player, stay all four years, make as much money as you can, because you'll probably make more money than you would your first year in the WNBA, right? Some of these women's college basketball players make up to one million dollars. That's that's a team salary sometimes in the, NBA, in the WNBA, right? Or close to it. So I'm saying that because. Women's college basketball has been exciting to watch over the past decade, right? Because we're seeing players stay all four years. Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, um, you know, Dawn Staley, getting these girls, leaving the whole roster, leaving and now not losing a game and win the SEC championship. We are seeing a, a global perspective of women's college basketball of following stories and players. White people, black people. Uh, everybody's invested in women's college basketball. The reason why the NBA doesn't well do well is because the culture changes. We're not following the stories, right? We're not keeping up to date with those things. But yes, watching South Carolina and LSU is a, is a prime time game, right? Watching Iowa, watching USC women's basketball, Juju uh, Juju Watkins, who I think is one of the best players I've ever seen, with just raw talent. Right, who probably will finish her career with more points than anybody. Right? We we see these players, we follow these stories, and they're ten times more exciting to watch and follow than it would be in any other uh in than, than men's basketball. <clears throat> Which leads me to the women's uh South Carolina South Carolina game and LSU game, SEC championship game. Um I love to see these two teams compete. Um they're always well matched, it's always a great game. Uh, I thought the first game, uh, South Carolina got kind of got away with Andrew Angel Reese fouling out. Um, but the situation that happened, I, I love the way Don Stelly responded to it. She said, "That's not our character. That's not how we operate. That's not what we do." Right? We understand college basketball and basketball itself gets chippy. Right? I'm pretty sure you have coworkers you don't like on your job. Right? You don't appreciate on your job. Right? It may get chippy. It may get a little tension, uh, contentious. Um, but that's the nature of the game. And I love the way she responded to it. 